Hey everyone, and welcome back to Miss Azrael's Gaming. So today we're playing a game by Square Enix called Paranorma Sight, and it's a horror adventure visual novel. And I thought it seemed pretty interesting. I like anything that Square Enix does, pretty much. So we're gonna hop into it now. It already started. There's no like main screen or anything like that. So we're gonna go ahead and start, and hopefully I don't get scared. So ah, you're here. Welcome, welcome. I've been eagerly awaiting your arrival. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the storyteller. Pleased to make your acquaintance. I shall be your guide going forward. Now then, before we begin our story, there are several things I must bring to your attention. First, this game uses autosave. The game will automatically save at regular intervals, so you may stop playing at any time. Saving is a very important element of games. It is the only way to keep your memories in place. If you do not wish to rely on autosave alone, you can also save manually via the menu. Next, please look at the upper right of the screen. This is the menu button. From here, you can check the text log, view useful files, and switch auto mode on and off. You can also adjust the brightness, volume, and other settings in the options menu. For instance, if there is a voice you would prefer not to hear, you can mute it by setting the voice volume to zero. Interesting. I suggest you check the brightness controls and other settings now before going on. I will explain other essential functions when the time is right. Ah, there is one more thing I wish to confirm before we continue. It would feel strange to go on without knowing your name. Please tell me what I may call you. Oh, you can call me Azrael. I see. Azrael 22, is it? Yes, that's kind of weird. Hmm, are you certain you wish to be called Azrael 22? Can I just do Azrael? We'll just go there. Oh, however do me. Please pardon my mistake. I was sure that's what you said, but it seems I was wrong. What came over me? Let me try again. You wish to be called Azrael. Okay, see, that's really creepy that it had Azrael 22. Weird. Okay, I see. Very good. I seem to have gotten it right this time. All right, now that we've been properly introduced, let us begin our story. Presented by Azrael. Ahem. <clears throat> From antiquity to present day, regardless of how society and civilization evolve, death has been a con constant presence that none have ever escaped. Whether it's its own or that of someone close, death is always a difficult thing to accept. This is an immutable reality, a value shared by all, no matter the age in which they live. In fact, oral traditions reflecting people's fears and prayers regarding death still remain, ghosts, spirits, and so on. Similarly, in an attempt to defy death, many curses, rituals, and customs have been born, from burning spirit incense, incense to summoning the souls of the dead. Some of those secret arts have still been passed down to this day. Oh, and on that note, Azrael, this may seem rather abrupt, but... Is there someone you wish to bring back from the dead? What if... What if you had one chance to use the secret art of resurrecting the dead? Yes, if you had the power to bring someone back to life one time and one time only, what would you do, Ezreal? So let's see, we have, I'd use it even if I had to sacrifice myself. I'd use it even if I had to sacrifice someone. I'd use it if it came out no cost. I wouldn't want it. Let someone else have it. Well, that's kind of a difficult choice. I mean, honestly, if I could, I would bring somebody back. Like my grandparents, who I really, really miss. But I wouldn't do it at the cost of somebody else. I don't think I would want to sacrifice myself. So I guess I would pick, I'd use it if it came at no cost. I see. Very interesting. Yes, yes. That is what I thought you would say. Hmm. What seems to be the matter? It's all up in my face. That's what's the matter. Uh, you want to know what this box... You want to know what this box that has been sitting here is. It's a TV. It's quite the curious thing, isn't it? This is called a colored television. The world I will be sending you to is full of devices such as this that do not exist in the age you are from. In this era, a colored television can be found in nearly every household. That is not all. For example, if a person should wish to contact someone while they are out of their home, they use public telephones like this that can be found all over the city. Can you imagine what life would be like in such a time? 
I'd be thrilled to have you continue the story, Azrael. After all, that is why you came here, no? So let us begin. I've kept you waiting long enough. I present to you Paranormal Sight, a bizarre tale surrounding the curse known as the Rite of Resurrection. A particular yarn ensnaring nine men and women in a fierce fight for their lives as it unravels. Some of the characters appearing within surely share your views on the Rite of Resurrection. I imagine those who have lost someone dear to them will feel particularly strongly about it, clinging to it as their last desperate hope. The first I shall introduce a man named Sogo Akai is one of them. Hopefully I pronounce that right. So Shogo, it's probably Shogo Oki, maybe? Shogo Oki, I think I said Akai, but it's probably Oki. Uh, male, office worker. Shogo is an unremarkable young man entering his third year of working in the planning department of Haihaku Soaps, a chemicals company headquartered in Sumida. Born in western Tokyo to an ordinary family, around the same time as the birth of the color TV, he grew up amidst the boom of special effects, heavy action films, anime, variety shows, professional baseball, and pop music. Shogo graduated from a famous private university in Tokyo and has since settled into an apolitical mindset common among those of his generation. With no strong ideals and no particular dissatisfaction with the world as it develops around him, he is, he is content to just go with the flow, having stumbled into his current position by pure chance, and it is safe to assume he will follow the stereotypical path of working his way up the ladder, starting a family and remaining at the same company until retirement. He plays folk guitar as a hobby and is currently looking for a girlfriend. Oh well. <laughs> and then we have the storyteller. We don't know his sex or his occupation. The storyteller guides those who visit Paranormal Site. Everything else about him remains a mystery. Well, that's funny. They said his sex is in question, but they referred to him as a him. It's kind of funny. Breaking news. Oh, I wonder what it could be at such a time. Early this morning, the body of a drowned man was discovered at a park in Sumata City. Police have identified the body as Sogo Okai, a 25-year-old man who worked at a company in the area. As signs of a struggle were found, the Sumata police suspect foul play and have launched an investigation. Ah, God, he's all in my face. Oh, excuse me. Please pay no mind to what you've just seen. Goodness, you very nearly saw something that would have spoiled the story. Just pretend you did not see that. Let us turn back time... Let us turn back... Wait, let us turn back time back a smidge and start again from there. That's a little confusing. Do you understand? You saw nothing. You know nothing. You know nothing, Jon Snow. <laughs> this story is a work of fiction. All locations, characters, and organizations, legends, etc. that appear in this game have no relation to reality. Shogo. Shogo, are you alright? Hey, can you hear me? Huh? Hey, that's not a proper answer. Earth to Shogo Oki. What do you think you're doing falling asleep here? You gave me quite the shock. Come on now, up with you, up. Uh, okay, and? There. How's that, alright? Do you feel dizzy? Have a headache? Are your humors off balance? I'm fine, I think. There's definitely nothing wrong with my humors, though my head's still a little fuzzy. Office worker, Shogo Oki. Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. Turn your head around a little bit to see if you can walk all right. When the game is in your control, drag the screen or move the right stick to look around. Oh, dragging the... It's a little... Ah! Get out of my face! Good, good. You seem to be fine. What a relief. Do you remember anything? Like, where we are or what we were doing? The Rite of Resurrection. I wonder if I should say that. The Rite of Resurrection? Huh? Wait a second. When did I tell you about that? I mean, I guess I must have, seen as you know that name, but weird. Anyway, you still seem a little out of it. Why don't you look around a bit more? Okay, look around and select things you want to investigate. You can converse with people by selecting their faces. Yikes, that was close. 
if we died before we got our hands on the Rite of Resurrection, everything would have been over before it started. Hmm, where are we? Oh, right, this is Sumata City, Tokyo. We're at Kishibori Park near Kinshushi Station. I'm going to butcher these names so bad. Yoko brought me here saying she needed my help with something important. It's just past midnight. That explains why there's nobody else around. Okay, so we have Sumata City, Tokyo. One of the 23 districts of Tokyo, located in the eastern part of the city. It is surrounded by Sumata, uh, Arakawa, and Kunakai, Ku, <laughs> Kunakai Rivers. At the start of the Shawa era, Showa era, the area was still divided in two districts, the southern Hanjo and northern Mukajima, but they were merged into one district after the Second World War. Uh, it is said to be named after the Sumata River and the banks that lie, lie in it. Unlike the river, however, its name uses the characters for ink rather than for the corner. Even now, people still frequently mix up the two. Despite suffering extensive damage from both the Great uh, Kanto Earthquake and air bombings during the war, Sumata managed to recover and come out, out on top every time. Once filled with samurai residents, it is now home to a thriving industrial district and many residential zones, though evidence of its previous character can still be found all around the area. Major landmarks, tourist attractions, we have Eco Tempo, former Yoshida Gardens, site of the Kira Kuzo... Kusunkin Suk's residence, Hanjo Matsukacho's park, Sumata Park, Tokyo Metropolitan Memorial Hall, and Mokojima Hayakin Gardens. I know I'm butchering those. I am so sorry. Kinshibori Park, opened in 1950, conveniently closed, um, close to Kinchu Kinsuchu Station and surrounded by on all sides by roads. This paved park is a popular spot for people to meet or relax. Kinsubori Park was named after the Kinsubori Canal, uh, Canal, part of the South Wurigasu Canal, which could once be found nearby. In fact, the area's name, Kinshu Kinshicho, was also derived from the canal. Telephone. These telephone booths are all over town. The lights are always on so they can be used in an emergency. Okay, it's a telephone booth, a small booth containing a public telephone. Most often found in parks or along roads. Local telephone calls can be placed at a rate of 10 yen per three minutes. More recently, telephone booths capable of accepting prepaid cards known as a telephone card have begun to spread, enabling one to make a phone call without the need for small change. The telephone booths in the downtown area tend to be plastered with unauthorized advertisements and leaflets, a problem that has shown no sign of slowing down. Everything says surroundings, it looks like. Oh. That's an interesting looking playground. I bet it's crawling with kids during the daytime, but it's kind of peaceful here at night. Okay, I'm not seeing anything else, so. Okay, that's the same thing. She's, let's recall. Ugh, I'm still a little woozy. What the hell is wrong with me? There's a girl here. Um. Who is she? That's Yoko Fukunaga. Good at least I can remember that much. I first met her about a month ago. She's 23, works as a housekeeper, and is really into the occult. If I think harder, I could probably recall a little more about what's going on. We've only met a few times, but we've really hit it off. She's a lot of fun to be around. I have no idea how she feels, though. I get the sense she isn't thinking about me that way right now. But I know I've got a thing for bubbly girls who are into dark things like the occult. Oh no, thinking of a bubbly girl being into the occult just doesn't seem like it would work too well. Okay, so she's a paranormal fanatic and Yoko Fukunaga. I'm sure I butchered that. Okay, so she's female and a housekeeper. 
After obtaining a junior college degree, Yoko started working as a housekeeper. Due to her ability to see things others cannot, she's received strange looks from a young age. This ability spurred an interest in paranormal, which she continues to pursue to this day. Following graduation, Yoko worked a desk job at a trading company, but butted heads with her supervisor, who is skeptical of the supernatural, and quit within a year. Now, while working as a housekeeper, she spends her days devouring mystery magazines and visiting haunted spots. As she vowed to live life true to herself and never change for the sake of others, Yoko has no regrets about the path she has taken. Yoko has a dog, a Shiba Inu, named Ogopogo, who has been by her side since she was a student. That is like an awesome name for a dog. I love it. Let's see if we can recall now. Let me think. What can I remember? Okay, her name is Yoko Funaga. Fukunaga. We met about a month ago. What's the deal with this park? It was around noon on one of my days off. I had just finished running some errands in Kinchiricho and was here taking a quick break. I was looking around absentmindedly. when I noticed this girl loitering about. She was digging up holes in the sandbox and searching around the playground. She seemed to be enjoying herself, talking to the animal figures and petting them on their heads. My curiosity got the better of me before long and I struck up a conversation. Hey, are you looking for something? Hmm? Oh, sorry, I must look like a total weirdo. Um, yeah, I guess you could say I'm looking for something. If you want, I could give you a hand. Really? I mean, that'd be a huge help, but... But, are you really just a good Samaritan, or are you after, you know, something else? Huh? Definitely the other. Let's say I'm a good Samaritan. Oh wow, my hero. People like you really do exist. I think I might cry. Okay, I guess I'll let you help me. Be warned, you might regret what you've gotten yourself into. No worries, what are you looking for anyway? Did you lose a bracelet or something? Not exactly. I'm searching for one of the seven mysteries. Supposedly this is the location of the Whispering Canal. The what? Now I've done it. I bet you think I'm some kind of lunatic. The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Do you know anything about it? I figured everyone around here would have at least heard of it, but I guess not. Hanjo is what the southern part of Sumada is called. A long time ago, this part of Tokyo was split into two separate cities. The north part was Mokojima, and the south part was Hanjo. Hmm. A am I boring you? Well, I'm not local or anything. I just work around here. Oh, then no wonder you didn't know. Well, the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo is a legend dating all the way back to the Edo period. Really? It's that old? That's like over 200 years ago. Oh, I've got your attention after all. I just assumed it was one of those fake stories made up to chase the occult craze. <laughs> I don't blame you. I have a lot of popular stories going around. Are, a lot of popular stories going around are pretty fishy. But the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo are different because they're all true. They're true? And that's what I said. They're the real deal. So hold on. What does that mean? Are you telling me there's actually paranormal stuff at work in this park? Yep, pretty much. But there's got to be more to it. After all I've done, I still haven't found a thing. That was the first time I met Yoko Fuganaga. Okay, so we have a map of Hanjo, a location in the southern part of modern Sumata City. It consisted mostly of swamplands until the middle of the Edo period. While, it's, while it wasn't originally considered part of the city of Edo itself, the area of the eastern side of Sumata River began to develop once the Ryogoku Bridge was built after the Great Fire of Miraki. While Hanjo is known for its large number of rivers and canals, many of these were dug during the area's urbanization for drainage and sewage. The Ryogoku Bridge area, home to the Eco Temple, eventually became filled with both people and shops. After a magistrate was assigned to the area and shops continued to pop up, it soon became a part of Edo proper as its reputation as a lovely place spread. Hanjo, along with other areas like Asakusa, <laughs> Asakusa and Fukukawa, are still appreciated today for their old-fashioned feel and architecture. Okay, the Whispering Canal, an enduring superstition. Formerly known as the Kinshibora, many fishermen once gathered on the section of the canal that ran through Hanjo. As their days came to a close and the fishermen gathered up their catches, a terrifying voice would rise up from the canal whispering, Leave it behind. Leave it behind. Those who ignored the voice found themselves unable to move and their previously full baskets of fish emptied. They would then be dragged into the canal never to return. This strange phenomenon continued to occur and the people began to call this body of water the Whispering Canal. 
So here we have the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo painting. Okay, the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Hanjo became known as a hotspot for strange happenings during the Edo period. A number of these stories have survived to this day and became known as the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. While many of these were likely the results of people blaming things they didn't understand on spirits or monsters, the stories continued to be told as urban legends. Despite what the name would imply, there are actually more than 10 of these strange tales. Their roots likely come from stories told by the city's common folk. The most famous of the stories is the Whispering Canal which eventually became the basis for both an idiom and a well-known Raikugo story. The most famous of the seven mysteries is the Whispering Canal, the Fool's Possession, the Beckoning Light, the Haunting Clappers, the Evergreen Beach, the Taiko of Tusagoro, the Footwashing Mansion, the One-Sided Reed, and the Ever-Burning Lantern. And then the occult craze, paranormal phenomenon, the supernatural, aliens, cryptids, lost civilizations, ESP. The list goes on. Such unexplainable phenomenon are quickly are quick to take on the life of their own. A pelosaur named Nessie living in Loch Ness, sightings of mythical creatures like the Toshi, Toshikingo or Hibagon, the urban legend of the Kuchisaki Ona, television reports of the spoon bending psychics documentaries which featured mediums and spirits photography these are only a few examples of the stories that have captivated the public there's no end to this obsession in sight with magazines on paranormal phenomenon enjoying widespread publication most recent rumors of ancient ritual known as the rite of resurrection have been spreading in certain circles we exchange contact information and we've talked on the phone a few times since. We've even met in person once or twice. But she never brought up the seven mysteries of Hanjo again. I figured she'd gotten bored of it. Until today, when all of a sudden she decided to resume her search. Hmm? Wait a second. Where did Yoko go? There she is. She's back to digging up holes in the sandbox and searching around the playground. She seems to be enjoying herself, talking to the animal figures and petting them on their heads. No animal needs that much petting. According to Yoko, the Whispering Canal, one of the seven mysteries of Hanjo, is around here somewhere. It's apparently the story that, that the expression left at the canal originally comes from. I think I left myself a note about it. I should check my files. Gee, she's still at it. Okay, so I'm assuming I have to look around. I'm sure she's gonna sneak up behind me or something. Cause nothing's standing out, it still says surroundings. Okay, let's try recalling again. That's right, she asked me to come here to help her look for one of the seven mysteries. Actually, I think I did some research into the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. I can't remember all too well. I should check my files. Okay, so he's researched all those stories that we read earlier. So, The Fool's Procession. An enduring superstition. A mysterious tale regaling an encounter had by a daimyo at his residence in Hanjo's Ushijima, now Komagata High School. When walking around his estate, he heard the sound of music, much like that of a Kugora performance. He commanded his people to find the source, but no matter how much they searched, the music would fade when one neared the Wurugasu Canal. The source of the sound was never located. This story is also known as the Procession of the Tanukai, as many were of the belief that it must have been these mischievous tricksters behind it all. Then we have the Beckoning Light, Enduring Superstition. While walking along the road near Ho'onji at night, one might spot a hazy lantern lit up, despite there being no one around. Falling it would cause it to go out, suddenly, when getting near. But just when one fears the darkness might swallow them up, another light will appear further ahead, as if guiding the one you see who sees it. Some say the flame is benevolent, benevolent, leading people to their home, while others believe it is a monster leading people astray. Some even believe it's the vengeful spirit of someone that died, luring the lost to the land of the dead. Okay, the haunting clappers. As the evening bell rings in Iriko, near present-day Sumoko Bridge, a night watchman patrols the dark streets and announces his presence by shouting warnings about fire, all the while striking the wooden clappers. But tonight, the sound of another set of clappers answers back. He curiously claps his clappers together again. Clack, clack. The echo answers again. But no matter how hard he searches 
for the source of his second pair of clappers. He never finds it. Some say it was the work of a mischievous tanuki or kitsune, while others say it was a warning from the spirit of someone who lost their life in a terrible fire. The Evergreen Beach Once upon a time in the north Ukaburabashi, a beautiful beech tree stood in the garden of Lord Sinden's, Shinden's residence, known as the former Yoshida Gardens. Uh, it was so impressive that the house became known among the people as the beach residence. Somehow, no one had ever seen a single leaf fall from the tree. As rumors spread of an internally green tree, it became known as the evergreen beach. However, this particular species of tree was actually an evergreen, so the lack of fallen leaves was nothing out of the ordinary. This has led people to say that the strangest part of this legend is the fact that it even became a legend at all. Okay, The Taiko of Tusuguri, Tusugaro. There once was a dom uh, daimyo from the Hirosaki domain in Tusugaru who built a residence in uh, Midorichu on a large piece of land. On this estate was an almost 8 meter tall tower that served as a lookout for fires. Only a designated firefighter was allowed to use the large drum that resided atop the tower in the event of a fire. While most towers used wooden blocks to s sound the fire alarm, for some reason the resident was permitted to use drums. The residents and special privileges led to much speculation and gossip among the townsfolk. Okay, we have the foot washing mansion. This is the story of something that occurred in the dead of night in the residence of Maikasachu, modern day south Wiragaisu Street in Kama, Kamazawa. A foul-smelling wind rattled the house. Suddenly, a giant foot drenched in blood smashed through the ceiling. Wash, it commanded. After the servants carefully washed the foot, it returned from whence it came, fixing the roof it had broken. A man who had been visited by the foot every night asked a friend to trade houses with him. That night, the foot stopped appearing. Then we have the one-sided reed. There was once an infamous rogue by the name of Tomizo who fell for a woman named Okama. Tomizo persisted, persistently chased after Okama, attempting to win her heart over again and again, but she rejected his advances each time. Enraged by her indifference to him, Tozim, uh, Tomizo brought a dagger to a canal near Ryogoku Bridge and attacked Okama. He cut the arm and leg off one side of her body, then threw them into the canal. Ever since then, the reeds growing along the canal have only sprouted leaves on one side. Yeah, that's horrible. And then the ever-burning lantern. On a bone-chilling winter's night, one may happen upon a, a soba cart along the canal known as South Ritagosu. But there is something strange about this cart. No matter when one might visit, its owner is nowhere to be found. Yet the lantern that hangs from it stays perpetually lit, burning brightly even with no oil to fuel it. Should one attempt to put out the flame, it immediately roars back to life. However, there is also the tale of the never-burning lantern, another tale of the story in which the soba cart's lantern always remains dark, refusing to be lit. Oh wait, she's coming back this way. Hey, what was that just now? Huh? Didn't you hear that? I didn't hear anything. No, I didn't hear anything. You sure you didn't just imagine it? Hmm, maybe I did. But your special talent. You should have been able to hear it. Pay closer attention for me, okay? My special talent? What are you talking about? Hmm? I mean, your spirit sense. You look like you can handle your liquor. Huh? I have no idea what drinking has to do with it, but I don't think so. Hmm, well, you must. I mean, you can see me, right? Huh? What is she a ghost? Shoko Oki, 1 a.m. Kisabori Park. Wait, wait, wait. You're kidding me, right? About what? I mean, just now. It kind of sounded like you were saying that only people with spirit sense can see you. Of course that was a joke, duh. You don't really think I'm some kind of evil spirit, do you? But yeah. I meant what I said about your spirit sense being strong. I bet you could down a whole gim gimlet in one gulp, seriously. There's somebody behind me. That's the real reason I ask you to help me with the seven mysteries of Hanjo business. Okay, let me just clarify something. Are you saying you can actually see paranormal stuff? Sure, I could handle a solid Moscow mule. Why are you measuring this in terms of cocktails? Not a believer, huh? Well, that's no matter. But you have to have some... You have to have seen some weird stuff over the years, right? 
Weird stuff? Yeah, like things you could see but could never understand. You can't be serious. There was somebody behind me. Let's see first. No, nope, there's nobody there. It's gotten really it's gotten late. Really late actually. It's already past 1 a.m. There's a chill in the air, but I guess that's normal for this time of year. Or so I keep telling myself. There was somebody behind me, I know. I saw somebody behind me. Okay, let's ask about spirit sense. I've seen ghost photos in magazines before, but are you telling me they really exist? You bet they do, but you can only recognize them if you really believe in them, so be careful. So even with my skill, I won't be able to see them if I doubt that they exist. That's right, the spirit world is all about the mind and soul. You won't be able to see things unless, you properly, unless you're properly in tune. But sometimes people get caught up in the moment thinking they might see something, and then they really do, because they believe they would. Is that how that works? Yep, just like drinking. You'll never know how much booze you can handle unless you're already, unless you're ready to down some shots. I'm still not sure I'm getting the drinking thing. <laughs> you know, I realized how strange it was as the words left my mouth. Sheesh. Okay, let's ask about alcohol. Totally unrelated, but do you actually drink real alcohol? I mean, whoa, talk about whiplash. I didn't expect you to start making small talk. Well, our conversation was getting a bit dark. I figured a change of topic might lighten things up. Oh, I see. If you really want to know. I like to think I can handle a few drinks. But to tell you the truth, I've never actually had a Moscow Mule. Really now? <laughs> I just thought it sounded cool. I would like to try it, though. Why don't we go for a drink sometime, then? Oh, are you asking me out? No, you're just being a good Samaritan, right? No, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'd be up for that. But only if we find one of the seven mysteries. Alright, then let's get to work. Can we, I guess we can ask her about that again. Let's go. To, let's ask her about it again. And if you can believe that, there might be hope for you yet. You can't be serious. Okay, now it's checked up. So let's do the seven mysteries of Han, Han, Hanjo. I just remembered I actually did some research on the seven mysteries of Hanjo at the library. You did? What did you find? Well, I discovered a few interesting things. Oh, tell me everything. Are these really ghost stories? Seven mysteries? Are these really ghost stories? So I read some of the stories, and none of them were, well, scary. I thought these were supposed to be ghost stories. That's true. They're more like a collection of superstitions, really. But there are some pretty disturbing ones in the mix. Yeah, like the one that's supposed to take place here, the Whispering Canal. People who fished in this canal could hear a voice calling out, saying, Leave it. They had to abandon their catch or the canal would take it. Right, right. Is that what you're expecting to find here in this park? Um, not quite. We're talking about a folk tale from hundreds of years ago. After centuries of the telephone game, who knows if it's anything like the original story. So basically, you think the true story of the Whispering Canal might be completely different from what we know. Exactly, I'm sure it is. I mean, weren't you curious? About what? People from around here have that Im have that expression left at the canal, right? Meaning to abandon someone. This story is where it comes from. Except the story being told today is about fish. There's nothing in it about leaving people behind. Now that you mention it, that's true. So you're saying the original story maybe did involve someone being abandoned. That's what I'm trying to find out. Ah, gotcha. Can't ask it again. What about the seven mysteries of Hanjo caught your attention? The seven mysteries. Although they're called the seven mysteries, the literature lists nine of them. Oh, I'm surprised you picked up on that. Nice researching. Some people think there could be up to 15. That's the thing about these old folk tales. Stuff gets added to them over the years. That's more extra stories than main ones. Yeah, but the seven mysteries rolls off the tongue way better than nine or 15. If you say so. But it makes sense, don't you think? It's more likely to be passed on if it's easy to remember. Huh, that's a good point. Okay, and then about the rite of resurrection. Oh, by the way, way were we talking about the rite of resurrection? Oh, your memory is as strong as your tolerance. I must start calling you Martini Man Sojo. I'm really climbing up the drinks menu, huh? <laughs> so you know about it, huh? The Rite of Resurrection? A magazine ran a feature on it recently that got practically everyone talking about it. Really? Maybe that's where I heard about it. Still, I don't know. It seems a little too far-fetched to be true. So the Rite of Resurrection. It's the forbidden art of bringing the dead back to life, concocted by a famous onom onomayoji from an ancient age. Rumor has it an old manuscript containing actual concrete details about the rite was recently discovered. This rumor comes from a presentation given by a local historian, Hadaki Arash Arashi, at an academy conference. You sure know a lot about this stuff. That's because I'm secretly a huge occult buff. I kind of got that. Oh. 
But if a researcher spoke about it at an academic conference, it must have some basis in fact. Actually, that's why I believe the right of resurrection is real. Now I'm starting to believe it too. Good, the pursuit of the unknown starts with belief. I got that from Professor Arashi himself. Hmm. Okay, the Rite of Resurrection. As indicated by its name, this manuscript holds detailed instructions on how to perform the secret art of reviving the dead. This forbidden ritual is said to have been devised by a once famous Onmyoji, local uh, researcher Hidekai Arasashi recently discovered the old manuscript and gave a presentation on it at an academic conference sending ripples through the field of occult studies. Wait, hang on. I've got another question. Hmm? You mentioned the Bride of Resurrection. Are you looking for that too? Does it something to do with the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo? Oh, you're sharp. I could cut my finger on you. To tell the truth, it's actually the other way around. What do you mean? Hmm. Well, I started off searching for the Bride of Resurrection. But along the way, I realized that I needed to investigate the seven mysteries of Hanjo first. I see, so then... Why are you looking for the right? What's that got to do with the seven mysteries? Why are you looking for the right? If you're looking into a way to bring someone back from the dead, does that mean you've got someone you want to bring back? Um, you know what, forget it. It just came to mind, so I thought I'd ask. I didn't mean to pry, sorry. No, it's fine. I figured I'd need to tell you at some point. It's... Ogopogo. Ogopogo? Yeah, I went to bring Ogopogo back to life. He died in an accident about a month ago. Ogopogo died? Oh, right. Ogopogo was my dog. I had him for eight years. Ah, okay, your dog. Gotcha. You spent a long time together. Losing him must have been really hard for you. Yeah, to be honest, I'm not sure if the right even works on dogs, but as soon as I found out about it, I knew I had to give it a try. I don't think I could forgive myself if I just let the opportunity pass by. Definitely. Now I understand why you feel so strongly about it. Thanks for telling me. I know this must be hard to talk about. Hmm. But you know what? All that led all that led to me meeting you. So at least something good came out of it. Though that doesn't mean I'll stop looking, obviously. Yoko, I'll do everything I can to help you. Yay, I'm so glad to hear that. Let's keep up the hard work then, yeah? What's that got to do with the seven mysteries? So about the connection between the right and the seven mysteries, putting together everything we've talked about. My guess is that the original stories behind the seven mysteries, the true stories, are the key to finding the right of resurrection. And that's why you're here searching for one of them. Do I have that right? Wow, 10 out of 10. You're proving to be quite the capable assistant. Wait, since when was I your assistant? Anyway, this is all just hearsay, but... Some say that would that what led to the seven mysteries coming to be was the right of resurrection itself. Hmm? Don't the stories come from the Edo period? I thought the right of resurrection was supposed to be way older than that. Right, it seems that in... Onomaiji, from the Edo period, rediscovered the ancient art. That old manuscript I mentioned with all the details on how to use the rite, apparently was written in the Edo period. Oh, right. I never told you its name. The manuscript is called The Record of Fates. Whoa, what a name. And it speculates that the secrets of the rite is hidden within the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. So now, the Seven Mysteries are the hot new trend. Among who? You know, this whole thing's starting to sound pretty questionable. Come on, remember what I said about the pursuit of the unknown? It starts with belief, right? Okay, so the Records of Fates, an old manuscript from the Edo period written by the sorcerer who recovered the Rite of Resurrection. It is viewed as a priceless and authentic document due to its detailed account on how to perform the ritual. Whoa. What the hell? It feels like the air just changed. What was that just now? Oh god, she's pointing behind me. No, I'm not looking. I feel eyes on my back. I can't move. Is there something behind me? Oh, Lord. I don't want to look. There's stuff. Is she screwing with me? I can't move there. Something's got Yoko really rattered. I looked behind me. There was literally nothing. It's probably going to be here now. Yoko's pointing over here, but I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Still, she looks really spooked. I doubt she's making this up. Damn it, did I miss her? Let's see, push. Ugh, I don't get this. 
What's going on? Did something happen? Yoko? Oh god. I don't want to turn around. What the? Huh? happened to her huh what the what is something's what is it why is this happening shoko oki 1 a.m kinsabori park yoko answer me yoko N no way it can't be what why Oh, God. Ah, what the hell just happened? No, damn it. I've got bigger problems. Y Yoko, just hold on. Everything's gonna be okay. Oh, God. She's not breathing. Sh she's cold. And I don't feel a pulse. This can't be happening. Okay, okay, okay. An ambulance, right. I gotta call an ambulance. I need a phone. Right, the phone. I've gotta call an ambulance. I called it in. The ambulance shouldn't be long. But is it going to make a difference? Her body's gone stiff and her skin is cold, and I don't think she's still she's breathing. She looks more like a mannequin than a person now. It's always a mannequin. I don't think there's any coming back from that. I don't get it. Just a few minutes ago, we were chatting away without a care in the world. Yoko. How did this happen? How could someone so bright and bubbly just suddenly drop dead? Resurrect her. Huh? Oh, that's right. If the right of resurrection she was talking about really does exist, there might be a way to bring her back. If someone can just drop dead out of nowhere, like, like they were cursed, then why shouldn't there be a way to bring them back to life? Yoko believed in it, so if I believe in her, it seems completely possible. Maybe, just maybe, I can still save her. Even if I've got to deal with spirit senses and curses and whatever, I've got to try. Wait for me, Yoko. I promise. I use the rite of resurrection to bring you back. Right before she died, I felt a strange presence a few times. And it seemed like she saw something. Something that shook her to the bone. There's definitely something strange going on. And maybe it's still here. What could she have seen? Probably that thing that jumped out at me. She mentioned that the rite of resurrection and seven mysteries were connected. So maybe, whatever it is she saw, had something to do with the whispering canal. Whoa. Damn it. That presence again. It must be around here somewhere, but where? It's probably in the playground equipment. The cold night air feels like it's pressing down on me. Just standing here makes me want to scream, but I've got bigger problems right now. Uh... Yeah, it's the same thing. So getting the same thing. I'm calling the ambience already. It should be here soon. Hmm. Maybe I should think. There's something here. I know it. I just need to look harder. Although, if some innocent... If some innocent poking around about the Seven Mysteries was enough to get Yoko killed, there's a good chance of the same thing happening to me. But I already knew that when I decided to get involved. There's something here on the ground. Hmm? There's something on the ground. Did Yoko drop this? I didn't notice it till now, but there's a small wooden sculpture by her side. It's three or four centimeters tall. It looks like it could be a keychain, but from how rotted it is, it's way too old for that. Despite how tiny it is, I feel an almost palpable menace, malice radiating from it. What the hell is this thing? Cursed stone acquired, the Whispering Canal. Great, now I'll probably be cursed. Ugh, what the? Help me, leave me. Are these the Whispering Canal memories? Ugh. Such deep sorrow or resentful memories flowing into my mind. Turn their backs, they walked away, leave me behind, drop dead. Kill them. Kill them. 
Those who walk away, kill them all. You acquire the power of a curse stone, the Whispering Canal. You can use it to kill those who walk away from you. Press the Use Curse button to kill your target as they attempt to depart. Ugh. Murder's impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. Now. Kill. Can you hear it, Curse Bearer? Who? You who so strongly desire the right. Kill them. Should you seek life's restoration, take your curse in hand. Reap lives by the score. And claim their soul dredges for your own. Collect enough to save this vessel. And by their sacrifice, claim the gift of resurrection. Or better yet, slay your fellow curse bearers. For theirs are the, are the equal of droves of lesser souls. Now, go forth and kill. Okay, so, the Whispering Canal, it looks like it's maybe been updated yet. Um, curse power kills by drowning one who leaves the curse bearer behind. A resentful memory. Toki loved fishing with her father, Jinkinchi, more than anything. With their wicker baskets on their backs, they would leave for the canal every morning and fish till the evening. The miso soup her mother, Koma, made using the carp they caught was to die for. Her parents loved her dearly. One day, however, her father disappeared. Toki's mother went to look for him and never came back either. Those who came to express their concern eventually stopped visiting her out of fear. Toki continued to walk all alone. Mother, father, where did you go? Don't leave me behind. Unable to bear the loneliness, she left her home and trudged along the roads until night fell. Neither her mother nor father were anywhere to be found. Tears stung her eyes. Suddenly, the sound of fish splashing in the water cut through the silence. She found herself standing before the canal where they used to fish together. The taste of carp and the memory of her father's smile flashed across her mind. Without thinking, Toki walked into the moat. The sound of the water splashing echoed throughout the night air. Passerbys thought of it only as a fish in the canal. The splashing faded, and the silence returned to the lonely night. Curse Echoes, Curse Bearers Curse echoes are the visual manifestations of curses. These manifestations are fundamentally related to the origin of the curse. They do not always take the same shape and may sometimes appear in a more abstract or disfigured form. They lack consciousness unlike a spirit and are thus the mere dredges of a soul. Curses are made tangible by what are known as soul dregs. Someone possessed by a curse that is a curse echo is called a curse bearer. A curse echo is in itself a curse, and a possessed curse bearer can inflict that curse upon others at will. A curse that comes with a curse echo is considered very powerful in and of itself. Ordinarily, those with no spirit sense would not be able to perceive a curse echo, but anyone who becomes a curse bearer can see other curse echoes. Okay, curse stone. Old Netsuki, old Netsuki carvings imbued with curse derived from the seven mysteries of Hanjo. Ordinarily, only those with the spirit sense can wield such curses, but these curse stones allow ordinary people to use them just as lethally. Soul dregs. When someone dies, their life essence leaves the body and becomes a soul. If one is killed by the means of certain curses, however, their life essence will turn into a, a residue known as soul dregs. The rite of resurrection essentially uses these soul dregs as a sacrificial offering to bring back the dead, but the amount of soul dregs required depends on when the person being resurrected passed away. The more time has passed since their passing, the more soul dregs are required. What the hell was that? It was like the curse of the memories flowed directly into my mind. In an instant, I understood everything. When I picked up this cursed stone, the Whispering Canal must have cursed me. I also heard a strange voice. It told me that if I went the right, I have to kill a bunch of people with this curse and stone and collect their souls. I guess it's good to know that the right really exists, but this thing wants me to kill people to get it. Screw that. Putting my life on the line is one thing. Murdering other people is another thing entirely. And not just one person either. Scores, it says. So this is the curse of the Whispering Canal, huh? The curse that traps the soul of anyone who tries to walk away from me. But if I use it and collect enough souls, then I'll be able to bring Yoko back. And there was something about other curse bearers being worth more soul dregs. Jeez. I'm really at a loss here. Oh, of course. I don't know how it took me so long to realize. This has to be some weird prank she's playing. 
Any second now, she's going to open her eyes, get up, and have a good laugh at how scared I was. Right, Yoko? You can give it up now. Boy, did I fall for that one. You really got me good. Wait, no, I've got it. You really were some sort of spirit all along. There's no way you're really dead, right? I'm not even fooling myself anymore. There's no going back. Only forward. Now I've got my own curse stone and the curse of the Whispering Canal. I'm in, a, in way over my head. Was Yoko the one who dropped this curse stone? Does that mean she was the previous owner of the curse of the Whispering Canal? Then did she know what the rite of resurrection involved? It feels like I'm being watched. Is someone there? Where are you? Oh, there we go. That's who I saw earlier. Now that I look closer, is there someone there? Now I'm gonna call out. Hey, hey, who's there? Oh my, how unexpected. It was your curse that killed that poor woman, I take it. What? Okay, I got your tongue, Mr. Oki. Huh? A tall, humorous-looking man. He doesn't look familiar to me. He's acting like he knows me, though. Have we met somewhere before? Let's see if I can think. That man. Who is he? He looks to be in his 30s or 40s. He's all dressed up in a suit and tie, but somehow he looks really shady. What's he doing here? Was he watching us all this time? Something tells me curses are nothing new to him. If he's one of the other curse bearers, then I need to be careful. He might be here to kill me and take my curse stone. But by the same token, killing him would net me a lot of soul dregs. I still don't have a clue who you are. How do you know me? Have we met? Dear me, it is always humbling to find that one is not as well known as one believes. Perhaps my name will help you remember. I am Tayuki... Takuyumi, Takumi Yumioko. Butchering these names this is awful. Takuyumi Yumioko. Does that ring any bells? I think I've heard that name somewhere before, maybe. So, do you even know my name? How disappointing. So, you do not even know my name. How disappointing. Disappointing, but fortuitous. So, mysterious stranger, Takumi Yumioko. Okay, so Takayumi Yumiko, Yumi, Yumioka, male, we don't know what he does, don't know if he has a curse echo, the man who was co uh, covertly watching Sojioki at Kishibori Park. Well then, Mr. Oki, allow me to make you a proposition. You have a curse stone in your possession. I would like you to give it to me. How do you know? you know about that? Why, I saw the whole thing. That doesn't explain how you know what a cursed stone is. Even I barely have a handle on it. You know about the seven mysteries of Hanjo and their curses and all that, don't you? But of course, those cursed stones, they're terribly dangerous things capable of killing without a trace so long as their conditions are met. I hadn't thought of it that way, but yeah. Imagine what might happen if one fell into the wrong hands. They would be safer in mind, don't you agree? Although it seems I arrived too late to stop you from killing that poor woman. What are you- That wasn't me. I'm willing to overlook your indiscretion. But only if you give me your curse, curse stone. No way in hell. For all I know, the wrong hands are yours. Very well. I'd hope to settle this amicably, but you leave me no choice. This Takamumi guy- Taka- Takomi guy must have a curse stone of his own. He must have a curse stone. He can't have a curse stone. He probably has one if he's one of mine. At least it'd be safer to assume so. It would explain how he knows so damn much. So he can kill me instantly, as long as he fulfills his stone's conditions. Until I know what those conditions are, I can't make any sudden moves. I have to keep him talking, learn what I can, and figure out a way to get my curse out first. How can I get him to leave me behind? Though, it'd be a waste not to take this chance to find out about the other curse bearers. I need a topic that'll keep him talking. My best bet would be... Probably about my curse stone. What do you want with my curse stone anyway? I intend to seal it away in a secure location so it may never be used again. 
I'm certain that you, too, would rather be free of this burden. The power to kill without fear of consequence is in, it, is in itself a curse. There are many ne'er-do-wells in this world who could not resist their urge to use it. All the more so if promised the chance to resurrect the dead. You'll seal it away how? I'll put it in the care of a sorcerer who is well-versed in supernatural matters. If I have gained your trust, I must ask you to hand, hand, I must ask you to hand me your cursed stone. Let's ask about him. Before I give you my cursed stone, I want to know who you are. I need to know if I can trust you. A reasonable enough concern. Very well. I'm an associate of the great sorcerer Sujin Gemayoda. Sujin Gemayoda. Indeed, you must have heard of him. I believe he was recently featured in a certain magazine. Your unfortunate companion there seems seeking his counsel not came seeking his counsel not a few days ago. It was from her that I learned your name. I thought she would have mentioned me to you, but it seems that was presumptuous of me. And when did this happen? Why, just two or three days ago. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm not buying that. He knows I don't know who he is, so he's just trying to feed me a story. I've only known Yoko for a month, but she never mentioned going to see some mystic. Although it is Yoko we're talking about here, so it's hard to say for sure. I hope that's enough to convince you that my hands are more than trustworthy. Maybe she was going to use this stone on us. It's all too possible. Okay, about Yoko. How do I know it wasn't you who killed Yoko with your curse? Mr. Oki, if you were hoping to trick me into revealing whether I possess a curse stone, I assure you, you cannot. It is your curse that was responsible, Mr. Oki, no matter what you might tell yourself. That doesn't make sense. I only found this after Yoko died. Oh? Don't play dumb. I know you're the one who did this. Whether you choose to believe me is your prerogative, but you are mistaken. You should know that multiple curses awaken at once at the stroke of midnight. There are many other curses in Hanjo and many other curse bearers. It is not premature of you to assume that I am the one responsible. Wait, so you're saying that at midnight a bunch of people became curse bearers? There's no point in continuing this conversation. For all I know, he could be telling me anything. If I want to use my curse on him, I have to get him to walk away and leave me behind. Now, what would convince him to do that? Scenario 1. He does what he came here to do. Scenario 2. He suddenly needs to be somewhere else. He's probably here for my cursed stone, so I don't think I'd get out of Scenario 1 alive. Scenario 2 means hoping something will happen by chance, and luck is rarely on my side. So my only hope is Scenario 3. Something makes it impossible for him to stay. I don't have to keep him away forever. I just need to get him to walk away once. Hmm. Let's try about the other curse bearers. For each of the seven mysteries, there's a curse and a curse bearer, right? Do you know who any of the others are? And what would you do with that information? Your intentions are nothing untoward, I hope. Is it in the hearts of the selfish and insepid, of those who would be more tempted, most tempted by the rite of resurrection, that the curses take root? And a curse's resentful memories impart a powerful urge to kill, as I am certain you are aware. You are a victim of circumstance, Mr. Oki, but your situation is exceedingly dangerous. You must relinquish your cursed stone for your own benefit before it is too late. Too late? It's already too late. There's no going back. All I can do is keep pressing forward. And if you're going to stand in my way, then I'll have to stop you. Am I to take that as a threat, Mr. Oki? I would encourage you to exercise more discretion before you fa fall foul of a curse. Why are you so convinced it was my curse that killed Yoko? Why, it is simply that... Hmm? Huh? I do believe I just saw your companion move. She what? I was going to say she couldn't have done it because I didn't leave her. Yoko's not tricking me. Y Yoko? Wait. She doesn't look any different. I knew it. No. Damn it all. Shogo Oki deceased. <laughs> ah, I knew I shouldn't have turned around. My, my, Azrael, you seem to have arrived at a less than favorable result. This is mere conjecture on my part, but perhaps you ought to be more careful about turning your back on unscrupulous individuals. Fear not, you may make as many attempts as you please from before your unfortunate mishap. Okay, let's try it. Very well, just remember, whatever you do, do not turn around. I kind of figured that. 
I knew you were tricking me. What are you doing? Should you not check on her? <laughs> I'm not falling for it again. I don't have to keep him away forever. I just need to get him to walk away once. Well, I don't want to turn around, so what am I supposed to do? Takayumi Yumiko. He said his name was. He hasn't taken his eyes off me for a second. Even now, he's still staring right at me. Who the hell is he? Maybe if I focus, I can recall something useful. Oh, recall. Takayumi Yumioka. How the hell does he know me? It's not like I've been getting out much. I barely have a life outside of work. Wait, that's it. My work. That's how he knows me. I've never actually met him, so it totally slipped my mind. Okay, the man who was covertly watching Shogiogi at Kisabori Park. Takumi is the sec secretary to the chairwoman of Hihaku Soaps, a chemical company headquartered in Sumati Sumata City. Takumi worships the company chairwoman, Natsu Yamamori, and demonstrates his unwavering loyalty through his swift and exact execution of every task given to him, just as Natsu Yamamori continues to exert her tremendous influence over the company since her retirement from the presidency. So does Takumi continue to support her from behind the scenes. Acting as Natsu's mouthpiece in his capacity has earned him the ire of the current president and the board of directors. Takayumi knows the names and faces of not only all employees at the head office, but also the temporary workers in their factories and warehouses, and even their main suppliers. Sujin Gamioda, my ass. This guy thinks he can sell me anything, but I don't know if he's... if having figured that out helps me much right now. Sujin Gamioda, my ass. I know who you are. You work at Hahaku's Soaps, just like me. You're the chairwoman's secretary. Well, that took you long enough. Your lack of company loyalty is frankly astounding. Allow me to reiterate my request, then. Not as a stranger, but as your superior. Hey, we're not at the office. You don't get to push me around like that. Why is our chairwoman's secretary even out looking for cursed stones, anyway? I refrain from revealing myself precisely to avoid such questions, but I suppose needs must. Since the dawn of the Shawa era, the land of Hanjo has nurtured our company's growth and vice versa. It is our duty to ensure that curses do not take root in this land we know as our home. I'm not sure I buy that. Like many things, it is not a matter that concerns the rank and file. The chairwoman has no desire to spread fear, though our beloved company's birthplace. Now, if that is all, I must insist that you hand me your curse down. He works at Hahaki, uh, Hahaku Soaps, just like me. He's the secretary of the chairman, Natsari Yamori. No wonder I didn't recognize him. He's way above us lowly peons. I've only ever seen him in the company bulletins, but he knows who I am. Oh, but he knows who I was. Could he have memorized the names and faces of everyone in the company? Okay, that's the same thing. I have to keep him away for it. Wait, I've got it. I know how I can convince him to leave. Oh crap, I totally forgot. What is it? I called an ambulance. Oh right, I forgot to mention, I called an ambulance. It should be coming in now. An ambulance? Have you lost your mind? They will arrive to find you standing next to a corpse alone in the dead of night. No doubt they will hand you over to the police who will have some questions for you. Probably, but I'm sticking with Yoko. Unless you want to join me in the interrogation room, you better get out of here. You're telling the truth, I see. They're getting closer by the second. I cannot afford to be waylaid at the at this juncture. I must I fear I must take my leave. I have to do I have to wait to use it? Sooner or later I'll return for your curse stone. I only hope you do not abuse it in the meantime. Yeah. Sujoki, you dare. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't want to do those noises. He's dead. He's really dead. Oh, he's got water coming out of his eyes and mouth. That's what that is. So this is what a cursed stone can do.
Whoa. The cursed stone of the Whispering Canal has gained 1% soul dregs. Wow, only 1%. His soul wasn't worth much. Shogaoki, 2 a.m. Kensicho... Kensicho area. I left the park immediately. I felt bad for leaving Yoko, but I could, couldn't stay there. Excuse me. The emergency medical services will probably take care of her body. Takumi's too. This will be all over the news tomorrow. But until then, at least I know she'll be in a safe place. All right. I have to find my next sacrifice quickly. I've got no time to waste. I need to find the other curse bearers and collect their souls. Killing Takumi barely got me any soul dregs. I guess he mustn't have been a curse bearer after all. It's not enough. The soul of a non-curse bearer amounts to little more than leftover breadcrumbs. I have to think of places where the other curse bearers of the Seven Mysteries would be. The curses were activated at around midnight. The others are bound to be actives, too. I should check to see if there are any other places with connections to the mysteries, mysteries nearby. At the very least, another curse bearer might be thinking the same as me, meaning I could run into them. Let's see. Which of the Seven Mysteries are closest? I'm in Kinsurochi area right now. The Haunting Clappers are on the other side of Oyoko River, just over Sumako Bridge. The Foot Washing Mansion and the Ever Burning Lantern are around South Wigisuri Street, past the train tracks. And further along Oyoko River, I'll find the Beckoning Light at Ho Huanji Bridge. Those three places are the closest. I guess I should start there. I'll collect the other Cursed Bear souls before dawn and break Yoko back to life. I should go to other locations connected to the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. The Cursed Stone of the Whispering Canal, one of the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo, is currently 1% filled with soul dregs. Okay, let's... We'll go to Shumoko Bridge. Shumoko Bridge area. The Shumoko Bridge is supposedly where the bell from the haunted clapper store used to be. I wandered around here for a while, but I didn't see anything interesting. The only thing I found was what looked like a hundred, a hundred yen lighter someone threw away. I don't know if cursors are valuable to fire, vulnerable to fire, but maybe I'll find a use for it. Of course, I didn't just find a lighter. There were a ton of cigarette butts strewn across the ground too. Seems like this place is well in need of some wooden clappers to warn about fire. Okay, let's go to South Borgesir Street. Both the Footwashing Mansion and the Ever Burning Lantern are from this area. This late at night, even a road as big as this one is silent as a grave. Is it just me, or is it oddly dark around here? Could this be? Could this be? Is this darkness the work of a curse? Have I already fulfilled its conditions to kill? Should I get out of here? Or should I stick around and figure out just what I'm dealing with? Let's look at our surroundings. I know it's past midnight, but it still seems oddly dark around here. And this feeling, it's the same as from before. Ooh, what's that? There, there's something over there. Is that a curse echo? A curse of the seven mysteries given form? I knew it. There's a curse bear around here. Is that the curse echo that's causing this darkness? It doesn't seem hostile. Is it trying to tell me to come closer? What should I do? Hmm. Let's observe it. No, approaching it would be stupid. I should keep my distance. <laughs> Freaking. Use the lighter. A cheap lighter I found lying around and barely has any light. Oh, it doesn't have any lighter flare. Okay, let's try to go closer. Nothing's gonna happen. If I just sit and wait, let's check it out. It's gonna jump out at me. Eee. Darn it, now what? This isn't a curse doing this. Somebody's pulling me. Ah, uh, that hurt. It looks like I'm inside a building. Did it toss me in here? I can't see squat. Is this the same darkness from the curse echo? 
I'm completely enclosed. It doesn't seem like there's even a window. There's no telling which direction I'm facing. Can I use the lighter now? That's right, I still have the lighter I picked up earlier. Perfect, it works. Now I can make out my surroundings a bit better. What the? It's something. Drat, he's got a light. That ruins everything. Is someone there? Are you a curse bearer? It's over. Time to get out of here. Jesus the curse. Ah, uh, what the? Why? Haha. -ha. That was a close one. I didn't catch a glimpse of the curse bearer, but it seems like I'm all right. The curse son of the Whispering Canal has gained 30% soul dregs. His curse must have been something to do with light and darkness. My guess would be the ever-burning lantern. So there's a connection between the seven mysteries and the way their curses work that might be useful to know. If the ever-burning lantern is the curse responsible for this, I guess maybe its condition is something about me being in total darkness. It's a good thing I had this lighter. It seems to have saved me. Oh man, if we would have went there first, we probably would have been in trouble. Okay, let's go ahead and go to Hoanji Bridge. I'm here at Hoanji Bridge, the location linked with the beckoning light. The other side is an industrial district. And further down from the bridge is the temple from which it gets its name. Someone's standing on the bridge, silhouetting themselves against the sky. Ooh. Jumping in my face. Wait, wait, wait. Fine. I'll go first. Whoa. Hmm. I see. I see. Interesting. Well, now, this is a surprise. Eh? Who are you? If you've got the wrong guy, just say so. Come on now, it won't hurt to at least tell me your name. Fine, my name is Shugo. Careful now, young man, it's not wise to go about giving your name to strangers. Gone is the age when might made right. Nowadays, it's information that rules the world. You do well to remember that. You're the one who asked. Your name, your address, your phone number, your age, your occupation. Your personal information is much more valuable than you might think. You might treat those things with care. So I guess you don't plan on telling me anything either. You can call me Richter Kai, private detective. But didn't you just say not to... Never mind. You say you're a detective? That's correct. I'm a man who deals in secrets. Don't expect me to share, my, share any more information with you, though. I only told you so that you, we could have an understanding. Private Detective Richter Kai. Male private investigator, the eccentric man that Chogo Oki ran into at Hongo Bridge. He's a flamboyant fellow. I wouldn't bat an eyelid if this were the inner city, but he stands out like a sore thumb in these parts. What's a detective doing around here? Working, and that's all I'll say about that. I could ask you the same thing, though. This seems like a strange place to stop. What brought you here? Stall, strange man. I'm looking for someone. Why should I tell you? Why should I tell you? I see. Clearly, you didn't stop here just before the chance to talk to me. Which begs the question, what did you expect to find here? Maybe this bridge simply appeals to you. But then, why would you go out of your way to drop by in the middle of the night? Hmm, I wonder if we should tell him. Let's just go ahead and tell him. Why not? I'm looking for the beckoning light. The beckoning light? Ah, the seven mysteries of Hanjo. That's right, a friend of mine was really into that kind of stuff. She says the beckoning light appears here in the middle of the night. I wanted to see it for myself. Haha, <laughs> really? You're the adventurous type, are you? Unfortunately, I think you're out of luck. I've been here for a while, but I haven't seen any strange lights. Alright, well, thanks for telling me. But just one second. There's still time left for it to appear. Why don't we wait together? Thanks, but I think I'm good. Really? Well, I'm sorry I couldn't be of any more help. Ah, oh, that's right, I'm in task. Do you have a light on you? A light? You mean for cigarettes? Well, I've got this cheap one I picked up, but that's it. Oh no, this will do nicely. Are you sure? Oh, I guess I can't. Just 
talk to him again? Anyway, I should get back to work. Once you're gone, of course. Is there a reason I can't be here? Of course, my work is top secret. Anji Bridge has a pretty unusual structure. The ends are stone, but the middle is steel. The Oyoki River beneath it is actually a canal that was dug during the Edo period. Hardly anyone's around, not surprising, seeing as past two in the morning. It feels like the whole world's gone to sleep. Can't talk to him about anything else. It doesn't seem like he has anything to do with the curse bearers. I should move on. If he's been here for as long as he says, there's a good chance he's seen something. But I don't think it's worth asking. He seems like all kinds of trouble. Okay, I've had a look around the area. I should head somewhere else now. Where to next? First around, Mitorichi Park at the end of South Wigarasi... <laughs> I can't say that word. Wigarasi Street is the Taiko of Tuzugari. North of there is a school called Kotamaga High School at the location of the Fool's Procession. It should be around here. Okay, let's go to the high school. Here I am at Komagata High School. The large gym gymnasium looms silently over the grounds. It doesn't look like anyone is in there. The school gate is closed, but climbing over looks easy enough. The school is supposedly on the former site of Daimyo's residence, where he encountered the Fool's Procession. It's now at the center of a quiet residential area. There's not a person in sight. Okay, so Kamagata High School. A co-educational municipal high school with 632 attendees. Its name is commonly shortened to Koma High. Although it opened as Hanjo's first middle school in 1943, subsequent re revisions to its enrollment policy saw it change its name, becoming Komagata High School. The school strives to instill its students with the three S's of Sumata, sound morals, social responsibility, and strength of spirit. But success has been limited. Plagued by delinquency, it has been forced to turn temporary employees to compensate for its high staff turnover, and its sports clubs face challenges with its inner city location and small campus. Its traditional culture research club is thriving, however, even issuing regular bulletins in collaboration with the local records office. If there's no sign of curse bearers or curse echoes, I should go search a different location. I haven't been able to... No, I can't move. I didn't think so. Looks like I can look at the school gate again. School day is closed, but climbing over it looks easy enough. Past the gate, I can see the main school building. Hmm, it's too dark and far away to see clearly, but I think I can almost make out someone inside. It's quite suspicious for someone to be here this late at night, but waiting here would be just a way to t waste of time. I should come back later. Okay, let's go to the park. This is Midorochi Park, located, location of Tako of Tusuguru, one of the seven mysteries. Huh? Someone's there. Two men, one middle-aged and the other a young adult talking to each other. There's a good chance that one of them could be a curse bearer. I'll try to scope things out without being spotted. To pick up their conversation from this distance, I'll have to focus in and watch them for a while, I think. If it looks like I'll be spotted, I'll quickly hide behind a tree to move out of line of sight. Uh, they were supposed to be around here, but I don't see anyone, boss. No need to get ahead of ourselves. I bet we see something before the night's done. Maybe you're right, but still, the seven mysteries. Huh? Was there a noise from behind us just now? How do I hide behind the tree? Hey, who's there? How do I hide behind the tree? Oh, you two are police officers. <laughs> People often say we don't look like it. Sorry if we startled you. I'm sure there's no problem, but we'll have to ask you some questions on this procedure. Oh, I'm Jun Iro. I'm from the Metropolitan Police Department Investigation Division. Newbie Detective Jun Iro. And this old guy with the scowling mug is Chief Inspector Chetsu Tsutsumi, my superior officer. 
You wouldn't guess from that frown, but he actually is quite the sweet tooth. Hero, quit babbling. Veteran detective, Tutsiro Tutsumi. Okay, he's a male chief inspector, the gruff police detective that so Sojo Yoki met at Midoruchu Park. Okay, then Juniro, male detective, the fresh faced police detective that Shoujo Oki met at Midorichu Park. He's as intimidating as expected uh, as I'd expect a veteran cop to be. First that private detective, now police detective. Why today of all days? I always imagine detectives as blunt and aggressive, but I guess there are some pleasant ones too. What is he doing with his mouth? <laughs> now first, can you show me some ID with your name and address and occupation? I'll be okay. I'm better off just going along with it. Wow, you work at Haihaku Soaps? I hear they've been rank raking it in lately. That true? I don't know much about that. I'm just a recent hire. People are loving their new hair products. You, that new hair product you have. I use it all the time myself. Thank you for your patronage. Iro, you use hair products? Keep it the times, boss. Guys nowadays all use these things. Isn't that right, Mr. Oki? Uh, yeah, sure. We even make men's cosmetics now. That's so. What a time we live in. Sorry, boss is the kind of caveman who thinks using only a bar of soap for all his washing makes him cool or something. I don't think that. I just don't care enough to use anything else. Actually, we do have all-in-one soaps for just that purpose. There are plenty of people like you. Ha! Hear that, hero? That's what I'm talking about. You should put out more of those. Aren't you riled up? Anyway, Mr. Oki, what is it that you're doing here? Um, actually, I'm searching for the Seven Mysteries. Have you heard of the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo, Detective? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of them. We were just talking about them a minute ago. A girl I know is into them. That's how I got interested. I see. I seem to remember even Midorichi Park had one of the mysteries associated with it. What was it again? Oh, crap. I don't remember. Uh, it's not that. It's not that. I don't remember. Let's go with the beach. Huh, are you sure about that? No, it's the Taiko of Tosugari. Oh, that's right. I think they mentioned in the beginning. This whole area used to be the residence of the Tasuguri, a clan of samurai. Are you sure you're really interested in the Seven Mysteries? Uh, sorry. There's so much to remember. I got a little mixed up. Come on now, boss. It's not like this is an interrogation. So that's why you were hanging around in the middle of the night. Discover anything interesting? No, nothing. Though I admit I haven't been looking into these things too hard. Right. I think I understand your situation. Thank you for your answers. Now it's quite late, so you best be heading home. Something wrong? You're free to go. You must stay. Um, excuse me. Since your detectives are around, does that mean something happened around here? <laughs> well, we are investigators, so it indeed related to a case. But don't worry, there's no threat to civilians whatsoever. We'll be here for a while longer looking into things, but you can rest easy. A while longer, huh? That's not good. This may be my only chance. I see. Well, I'll be going now. Take care. Mm, we're done here. Go on home. Well, I'm fairly sure one of them is a curse bearer. Getting them to leave will be hard. Maybe I should go somewhere else before they get any more suspicious of him. Okay, so I guess I get head back to the high school. Maybe that person came out. Here I'm at Komagati High School. Let's see here. Ah, someone's there. Huh? Whoa, what the? Ouch. I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, but did you just climb over the school gate? A girl in school uniform came climbing over the front gate. She must be a student here. Hmm, the thing she's holding in her hand. Oh, no doubt about it. That's a cursed stone. This girl's a curse bearer. What's going on? Why are you at the school this late? Uh, well, I'm really sorry. I'm in a big hurry right now, so I gotta go. Oh my god, should I use it on her? Uh, I feel bad using it on a high school girl. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I don't know. I feel bad. Uh, I don't know. Uh, should I use it? Oh man, this is like a moral dilemma. I don't know. I know for sure she's a curse bearer. All right, let's use it. Huh? Ah, a, a curse. Why? It can't be. Mio, I'm sorry. Wow, I feel horrible about that. Oh, she was only worth 6%. Killed her. Yes, I got a curse bearer. This is working. I just have to keep it up. How many more do I need? One, two. Suji Oki, 3 a.m. All right, on to the next one. First, the one-sided read by Ryogoku, Ryogoku Bridge. Then the evergreen beach at the former Yoshida Gardens along the Samata River. Finally, Samata River. Okay, let's go to the gardens. The former Yoshida Gardens. There was some kind of incident here recently, so the entrance was closed off, but it was easy enough to sneak in since there are no guards at this time of night. However, it feels weird being in these magnificent gardens after hours. There's not a visitor or groundskeeper in sight. The Ryugo Public Hall is also on the grounds. Its eye-catching structure makes the place feel even more otherworldly. So the former Yoshida, Yoshida Gardens, a lush green park administered by Sumata City, as is common in traditional Japanese gardens, its large central pond is shaped like the character for heart. The paths that crisscross its ground lined with stone lanterns are perfect for strolling while approaching the foliage or bird watching. The gardens once pulled in the waters from the Samata River so that its pond would ebb and flow with the tide. A novelty in Edo, which has begun filling in the bay to support its expansion, but the practice has been discontinued in modern times due to flood prevention measures. I already looked at the surroundings. Oh. So have you decided what you're going to do? With your... Oh, so precious. Why am I being pulled in so close to her? Curse. Stone. Yeah. As soon as I snuck into the gardens, a woman inside called out from behind me. I've been waiting for you. I have a cursed stone. Her sudden proclamation had me at a loss for words, so the woman continued. I have you in a position where I can use my curse on you whenever I please. If you hand over your cursed stone, I will at least spare your life. In that moment, all I could squeeze out in the reply was, let me think about it. Which brings us to now. All right. A woman in her 30s, she has a refined air about her, like she was brought up in a family of high school social standing. But I also sense a shadow hanging over her. I wonder if it has to do with this place. Don't tell me you still haven't made up your mind. Such an indecisive man. Wait, um, I might hand over my cursed stone depending on certain things. Will you hear me out for a moment? Sure, go on. Let's just go to the stones. If you take my cursed stone, what are you going to do with it? With your cursed stone? It's brimming with soul dregs, isn't it? It's already killed so many now. How does she know so much? I'd like to avoid such crude methods myself. Seven. Can you take soul dreads from other curse bearer stones and add them to your own? Who knows? But you have to admit it's worth trying. 
So basically, you want soul dregs, but you steal the ones others have gathered because you don't want to get your own hands dirty. You're half right. But half wrong, too. I don't mind getting my hands dirty. I just want to end with this as little trouble as possible. Understand? Six. Oh man, she's counting down. She's kind of like, destroy me. You want soul dregs. That means you're after the right of resurrection too. Not that I'm trying to compare our circumstances, but I can ask what led you to this. Oh my. Do you mean that if my situation is more dire than yours, you'd give your cursed stone to me? Sure, I'd consider it, so tell me. Liar. Huh? You wouldn't hang your fate on something as superficial as that. Nor would I. Five. Do I want to keep trying to talk to her? Damn it, did I expose myself somehow? She said she can use her curse on me anytime. I guess I've already fulfilled its conditions. It could be a bluff, but since she seems to have information on me, it's probably true. I can't hand over my cursed stone. I need to figure out how her curse is activated and find a way out of here. For now, maybe I can get some information by talking about something that'd catch her interest. How do you know you haven't already set off my curse? Go on then, use it. If I had, you could have activated it without all that bluster. And yet, here you are. Damn, does she already know about it? Or about that student from before? But if she already knows what, what would activate it, she wouldn't hide it. Because if you know what activates my curse, there's no way you would set it off yourself. So she must not know yet. I still have a chance. Listen. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. About what? Talking like this instead of killing you immediately. It's just a whim of mine. What I mean to say is that you were never in a position to bargain. Four. Holy crap, man. What am I supposed to do? I don't know what to ask her. Let's try the resurrection. Probably gonna end up dead. My son. What? He'd be in the sixth grade now. If he were still alive. Ah. Uh, when I'm one of the big kids, I'll help look after the second and first graders, he'd say. He always had a strong sense of justice and responsibility. He wouldn't stand by when he saw other kids being bullied. He's def he'd defend them even if he was no match for the bully himself. He'd often come home in tears, but not but only because he was sad that he wasn't strong enough to save others. He wanted to be a policeman when he grew up. Okay, okay, I get it. I've heard enough. Oh, that's enough for you? Yeah. Hearing such a sad story just makes me all the more sorry that I haven't changed my mind. I see. <laughs> so even after what I told you? Three. You still won't hand it over. Two. Dang, man, I don't know. Maybe I should introduce myself. You actually can't kill me, can you? And that strange countdown from before, too. It's just a bluff to threaten me. I don't give in to threats, so why don't you give this up and... If that's the case, give it a try, then. Only two more now. Let me tell you the number. One. This conversation is over. Zero. Such a shame. What? This is the end for you. I figured I was gonna die. Farewell. No! Ah, fire, fire. It's so hot, it, it burns. Fire, fire? Ah, oh, of course, that's what it was. Ah, that guy, damn it, he must have been following me, but it's already too late. <laughs> Sojioki deceased.
My, my, Azrael, you seem to have arrived at a less than favorable result. It was not all in vain, however, as you finally realize how the curse is activated. Fear not, you may make as many attempts as you please from the conversation with the lady. Okay, guys, so we're going to end it there. I find this game really interesting. It's a lot different than most visual novels that I've played. There's actually a few more elements, like you could actually look around, make more decisions than just conversation wise so let me know in the comments what you think about this game uh like i said I, i'm really enjoying it right now hopefully you are too so please leave me a like and subscribe if you haven't share this video with anybody that you think might enjoy it and i'll see you next time bye